In today's competitive job market, stakeholder management skills are increasingly important for career success. This video presents the top 25 interview questions and answers that can help you navigate discussions about stakeholder engagement effectively. By focusing on these key questions and well-crafted responses, you'll be better prepared to showcase your abilities. Gain insights into best practices that can set you apart from other candidates during your interviews. 1. How do you define stakeholder management and why is it important? Stakeholder management involves identifying, analyzing, and engaging individuals or groups who can influence or are affected by a project. It is crucial because effective stakeholder management fosters collaboration, aligns expectations, and enhances project success. By understanding stakeholders' needs and concerns, project managers can mitigate risks and avoid conflicts. Engaging stakeholders early and consistently ensures their support and commitment, which is essential for achieving project objectives and maintaining organizational credibility. Successful stakeholder management leads to better decision-making and contributes significantly to project sustainability. 2. What methods do you use to identify key stakeholders for a project or initiative? Identifying key stakeholders involves several methods. First, I conduct stakeholder analysis by mapping out individuals and groups who may impact or be impacted by the project. Tools like stakeholder matrices help assess their influence and interest levels. Engaging with team members and conducting interviews can uncover hidden stakeholders. Additionally, reviewing project documents and organizational charts aids in identifying relevant parties. Regularly updating this information ensures that no critical stakeholders are overlooked as the project evolves. 3. How do you prioritize stakeholders based on their influence and interest? Prioritizing stakeholders involves assessing their influence and interest in the project. First, I map stakeholders on a grid, where one axis represents their level of influence and the other their level of interest. Stakeholders in the high-influence, high-interest quadrant receive the most attention, as their support is critical. I also engage with those in the high-influence, low-interest quadrant to keep them informed. Regular communication and updates help ensure that stakeholders feel valued and acknowledged, which can lead to stronger support and alignment throughout the project lifecycle. 4. Describe your process for creating a stakeholder communication plan. Creating a stakeholder communication plan begins with identifying stakeholders and their unique needs. I assess their influence and interest levels, which helps prioritize communication efforts. Then, I define key messages tailored to each stakeholder group, ensuring clarity and relevance. I establish frequency and channels for communication, such as emails, meetings, or reports, based on preferences. Finally, I incorporate feedback mechanisms to adapt the plan as necessary, ensuring ongoing engagement and alignment with project goals while adjusting to any changes in stakeholder dynamics. 5. How do you tailor your communication style for different types of stakeholders? Tailoring communication for stakeholders involves understanding their preferences, motivations, and concerns. For executives, concise updates focusing on strategic impacts are effective while team members may benefit from detailed explanations and collaborative discussions. Visual aids can help clarify complex information for non-technical stakeholders. Regular check-ins and adapting the communication channel, whether email, meetings, or informal chats, can enhance engagement. Empathy and active listening are essential to ensure that each stakeholder feels valued and understood, fostering a more productive dialogue. 6. Give an example of how you've successfully managed conflicting stakeholder interests. One significant instance involved a project where two primary stakeholders had opposing views on budget allocation. One prioritized cost reduction, while the other focused on quality enhancements. To address this conflict, I organized a joint meeting where both could express their concerns. Encouraging open dialogue allowed for a clearer understanding of each party's priorities. By facilitating a collaborative brainstorming session, we identified a compromise that satisfied both interests, reallocating funds from less critical areas to enhance quality, ultimately leading to project success without significantly impacting the budget. 7. What strategies do you use to build trust and rapport with stakeholders? Building trust and rapport with stakeholders begins with open and transparent communication. Regular updates and honest discussions about project progress and challenges create a foundation of trust. Actively listening to stakeholder concerns demonstrates respect for their opinions and fosters a collaborative atmosphere. Engaging stakeholders through meetings, feedback sessions, and informal interactions helps establish personal connections. Consistency in delivering on promises and being reliable also strengthens relationships. Recognizing and valuing stakeholder contributions further enhances trust, encouraging a positive partnership throughout the project lifecycle. 8. How do you handle a situation where a key stakeholder is resistant to change? When facing resistance from a key stakeholder, it's crucial to first understand their concerns. I engage them in a dialogue, actively listening to their fears and motivations. This helps in identifying the root cause of their resistance. I then present data and case studies that illustrate the benefits of the change, aligning them with their interests. Offering support, such as training or resources, can also ease their transition. Building rapport and trust through transparency and consistent communication is vital in addressing their concerns and fostering a collaborative environment. 
9. Describe a time when you had to deliver bad news to a stakeholder. How did you approach it? When I had to inform a stakeholder about a significant project delay, I first ensured I had all relevant information at hand. I scheduled a private meeting and created a safe environment for discussion. I started by acknowledging their expectations and the potential impact of the delay on their objectives. I then explained the reasons for the delay, focusing on transparency while emphasizing our commitment to addressing the issues. Finally, I shared a revised timeline and outlined steps we would take to mitigate further risks, inviting their input and showing that their concerns were valued. 10. What tools or techniques do you use to track stakeholder engagement throughout a project? Tracking stakeholder engagement throughout a project involves several effective tools and techniques. A project management software, such as Trello or Asana, can be utilized to monitor tasks assigned to stakeholders and their participation levels. Regular surveys or feedback forms help gauge engagement and satisfaction. Additionally, maintaining a stakeholder register that outlines interactions, concerns, and contributions ensures transparency. Using communication platforms like Slack or Microsoft Teams allows for real-time updates and fosters ongoing discussions, enhancing engagement tracking and relationship management throughout the project lifecycle. 11. How do you ensure stakeholder expectations are realistic and aligned with project goals? To ensure stakeholder expectations are realistic and aligned with project goals, I begin by engaging stakeholders early in the project. This involves clear communication about project scope, objectives, and potential challenges. I facilitate workshops or meetings to gather their input, which helps in setting mutual expectations. Regular updates throughout the project lifecycle help address any changes or misalignments promptly. Additionally, I encourage feedback, allowing stakeholders to voice concerns, which fosters transparency and trust, ultimately maintaining alignment with project goals. 12. Describe your approach to managing stakeholder relationships in a virtual or remote environment. Managing stakeholder relationships in a virtual environment requires proactive communication and engagement strategies. I prioritize regular check-ins using video conferencing tools to foster personal connections. Clear, concise updates via email or project management platforms ensure stakeholders stay informed. I also utilize collaborative tools for document sharing, which facilitates real-time feedback and enhances transparency. Understanding time zones and cultural differences helps tailor my approach, ensuring all voices are heard and valued, thus strengthening relationships despite physical distance. 13. How do you handle stakeholders who are not actively engaged in the project? Engaging stakeholders who are not actively participating requires a proactive approach. First, I identify the reasons for their disengagement through one-on-one -on -one conversations or surveys. Understanding their concerns or lack of interest helps tailor my communication. I then implement targeted strategies such as regular updates, invitations to participate in key meetings, or creating specific touchpoints that align with their interests. Building relationships is crucial. I ensure they feel valued and informed, which can rekindle their engagement and encourage their contributions to the project's success. 14. What methods do you use to gather and incorporate stakeholder feedback? Gathering and incorporating stakeholder feedback involves several methods. Surveys and questionnaires are effective for collecting quantitative data on stakeholder opinions. One-on-one -on -one interviews allow for deeper insights into individual perspectives. Regular feedback sessions or workshops can foster open dialogue and encourage collaboration. It's essential to actively listen, document feedback, and prioritize suggestions that align with project objectives. Incorporating feedback may involve adjusting project plans or communication strategies to enhance stakeholder satisfaction and engagement, ensuring their voices influence decision-making processes. 15. How do you balance the needs of multiple stakeholders with limited resources? Balancing the needs of multiple stakeholders with limited resources requires careful prioritization and open communication. First, it's essential to identify each stakeholder's key interests and expectations. Using tools like a stakeholder matrix can help assess their influence and urgency. Regularly engaging stakeholders through meetings and updates allows for transparency, enabling them to understand resource constraints. By fostering collaboration, we can explore creative solutions, such as resource sharing or phased implementations, ensuring that all parties feel heard and valued while working towards common goals. 16. Describe a situation where you had to influence a stakeholder without formal authority. In a previous project, I encountered a situation where a senior stakeholder was hesitant about adopting a new software system. Despite lacking formal authority, I arranged a series of one-on-one -on -one meetings to understand their concerns better. I presented data highlighting the software's benefits, including efficiency improvements and cost savings. By actively listening and addressing their specific worries, I was able to build a rapport and gain their support. Eventually, they became an advocate for the change, facilitating buy-in from others in their department. 17. How do you manage stakeholder expectations when project scope or timelines change? Managing stakeholder expectations during changes in project scope or timelines requires clear communication and proactive engagement. First, I promptly inform stakeholders about the changes and the reasons behind them. Transparency is essential to maintain trust. 
Next, I assess the impact of these changes on stakeholders' interests and priorities, then collaboratively adjust expectations. By involving stakeholders in discussions about revised timelines and deliverables, I ensure they feel heard and valued. Regular updates and check-ins help keep everyone aligned and mitigate potential frustrations, thereby fostering a cooperative environment. 18. What strategies do you use to maintain stakeholder support throughout a long-term project? Maintaining stakeholder support throughout a long-term project requires consistent engagement and communication. Regular updates on project progress help keep stakeholders informed and invested. Establishing a feedback loop allows stakeholders to voice concerns and suggestions, fostering a sense of ownership. Building personal relationships through informal check-ins can enhance trust. Additionally, addressing stakeholder needs promptly and demonstrating how their interests align with project goals reinforces commitment. Celebrating milestones together can also strengthen relationships and highlight the value of their support. 19. How do you approach stakeholder management in a cross-cultural or international context? Effective stakeholder management in a cross-cultural context requires a deep understanding of cultural differences and communication styles. I prioritize building relationships by actively listening and showing respect for diverse perspectives. Tailoring communication methods to fit cultural norms is essential, for example, using formal titles in some cultures while being more casual in others. I also adapt my conflict resolution strategies, recognizing that different cultures may approach disagreements differently. Engaging local stakeholders as cultural liaisons can greatly enhance understanding and foster collaboration across diverse teams. 20. Describe how you would onboard a new stakeholder who joins mid-project. Onboarding a new stakeholder mid-project requires a structured approach to ensure they are effectively integrated. First, I would schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting to understand their background, expectations, and any concerns they may have. Next, I would provide them with essential project documentation, such as objectives, timelines, and previous meeting notes, to bring them up to speed. Additionally, involving them in key discussions and introducing them to relevant team members fosters a sense of inclusion. Finally, I would establish clear channels for communication, making sure they feel comfortable reaching out with questions or input. 21. How do you measure the effectiveness of your stakeholder management efforts? To measure the effectiveness of stakeholder management efforts, I utilize both qualitative and quantitative metrics. Surveys and feedback forms can provide insights into stakeholder satisfaction and engagement levels. Additionally, tracking the number of stakeholder interactions and the frequency of communication allows for assessing relationship strength. Analyzing project outcomes in relation to stakeholder expectations also offers valuable information. Regular check-ins and adapting strategies based on feedback ensure continuous improvement in managing stakeholder relationships effectively. 22. What steps do you take to re-engage a stakeholder who has become disinterested or dissatisfied? To re-engage a disinterested or dissatisfied stakeholder, I first initiate a one-on-one -on -one conversation to understand their concerns and feelings. Listening actively is crucial to identify specific issues. Then, I provide tailored updates on project progress and emphasize how their input is valuable. Inviting them to participate in discussions or decision-making processes can reignite their interest. Additionally, I might offer opportunities for them to contribute in a meaningful way, ensuring they feel their involvement is impactful. Regular check-ins help reinforce their connection to the project and restore trust. 23. How do you handle confidentiality when managing multiple stakeholders with varying levels of access? Managing confidentiality requires a strategic approach. First, establish clear guidelines on what information can be shared with each stakeholder based on their role and need-to-know basis. Utilize secure communication channels to ensure sensitive information remains protected. Regularly review access levels, adjusting them as necessary to maintain confidentiality. Encourage an open dialogue about privacy concerns, creating a culture of trust. When conflicts arise, prioritize transparency while safeguarding sensitive data, ensuring stakeholders feel respected and informed without compromising confidentiality. 24. Describe a time when you had to mediate a conflict between stakeholders. What was your approach? In a project involving multiple departments, two key stakeholders had opposing views on resource allocation. I first scheduled a meeting to hear each party's concerns and objectives. Active listening played a crucial role in understanding their perspectives. After gathering insights, I facilitated a joint discussion, encouraging open communication and respect. We explored options that could benefit both sides, ultimately crafting a compromise that aligned with project goals. This approach not only resolved the conflict but also strengthened relationships, fostering collaboration moving forward. 25. How do you ensure continuity in stakeholder relationships during team or leadership transitions? Maintaining continuity in stakeholder relationships during transitions requires proactive communication and strategic planning. Establishing a transition plan that includes introducing stakeholders to new team members is essential. Regular updates and meetings help reassure stakeholders that their interests remain a priority. Documentation of previous interactions and decisions can aid the new leadership in understanding stakeholder backgrounds and expectations. 
Encouraging open dialogue allows stakeholders to voice concerns, fostering trust and collaboration during the transition period. In this video, we've explored the top 25 stakeholder management interview questions and their corresponding answers to help you excel in your next interview. Mastering these questions can significantly enhance your ability to communicate and collaborate with key stakeholders, ensuring successful project outcomes. We hope you found this content valuable and feel more confident in your interview preparation. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more insightful content that can guide you in your professional journey. Thank you for watching, and best of luck in your interviews.